along into this portion where we're talking about the frontal choke and uh, techniques to get yourself out of it, Randy showed the one finger technique driving into the hollow of the throat. Now, when my opponent starts to choke me, by the way, he does outweigh me by about 80 or 90 pounds. We're gonna show you how to negate some of this strength. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to break away without doing any damage. Go ahead, when you put the choke on, grab and choke like you meant it. Okay, if you noticed, put your hands out towards the throat. Okay, even though he's larger in the arms than me, just putting my fist in the center of the chest and pushing off, I can break the hold. This next technique is based on the fact that he cannot hold me up and choke me simultaneously. So when you start choking, act like you really want to do the damage, and we'll show a real quick technique to go underneath his power and negate it. Go ahead. Right there. If he, if those punches, well, I leaned into him a little bit, he'd have taken four or five shots to the pelvic region, would have doubled him up, I could have finished him with a number of kicks, punches, or in a situation, made an escape and got out of the situation. In this technique, we're going to show you another strike point, not often used and not common. It's for a, this is going to be my weapon. I'm being assaulted, another frontal choke, and this is going to be my weapon, but not the whole thing. On this end and this end are mostly guides. Here is the weapon where the side of the knuckle, right before the thumb web, and these ends of the weapon are for a channel. And we're going to strike up like this, but we're not going, and the target is this bony portion here. You're not going to try and strike directly for that. You're going to use the person's chest as a guide, okay? Practice that way. It works just fine when you have to use it actually that way, because if you hit in and you're going that way, it automatically slides there and hits that bony portion. Just pop, okay? It looks like, turn that way a little bit. Okay. It looks like this, and this part hits here, like that, push in. You try one time, come on, okay, you get the same benefits, the technique that we showed you with this is just as good a release as this, a same push away, but you get also get a strike to a portion of the body that it's easy to uh, cause an effect that is equal to a strike and not just a release. This is a strike and it works as a release. You can also use it driving in and maintain an attack, but it serves its purpose easily. Strike and you're away. Now, another defense on the frontal choke, and this is probably one of the most decisive of all the moves that we've shown you so far. Uh, it puts an attacker down and out. Now in the frontal choke, what we're gonna do first, okay, the same method, we're gonna go in between, but as we come up, we're gonna break in, and automatically, the thumbs are going into the eyes. Okay, after I break that, push the eyes, I'm gonna drive the forehead into the malfactory area, put the kick in, drive, and shove them back and out. Now, one point, that I want to make on this. The head button, we're going to show you a little bit. Randy's going to give you a little instruction on how to deliver one of these properly. It is a very effective blow, one of the most effective that I know of. A uh, 90-pound man can take a 275-pound person and knock him out with one shot. The problem with the head butt, if you are not willing to practice this and use this instruction that we give you on this, only use it in a life or death situation. Let's say, example, a woman who's trapped in her house and knows this person is gonna beat her and rape her because you can do damage to yourself. We're gonna give you some instruction on it. It is a devastating blow, but it's also a dangerous one. And if you look back at this tape, you notice when I struck, I struck with my back, I didn't whip my neck. The power comes from the back. We're gonna show you the technique one time and then Randy's gonna show you the fine art of headbutting. Okay, grab again. Once again, the choke comes in, break out, drive thumbs into the eyes, okay? Headbutt, driving the forehead into the malfactory, knee to the groin, and drive them back. The danger point in using the head as a striking weapon is not the damage you can sustain to your own head. The danger is in breaking your neck. The third vertebrae down is at risk 
in a car accident, violent shaking of the head, uh, a falling accident, falling down the stairs, that's what's uh, at, at risk. And it's the same with using the head as a weapon. When you use the head as a weapon, this portion of the forehead right here is the target area. This is what you're using as the tool. The danger and how you eliminate the danger is, number one, Bob already told, mentioned to you, do not whip your neck back and forth to use your head as a weapon. You use your head as a weapon by going like this. The back bends and moves. You normally, in a strike that's going to be involved in uh, using the head as a weapon, you don't have great distance to cover. It's just a very short strike. You're already in mostly a grappling mode, face-to-face, hand-to-hand, very close, so you don't have great distance to move. Also, since you're using the head as a weapon, you've got one or both of your other hands free, and you can move the target to your head also. The number one technique you have to remember, you have to get uh, used to using it, so it's very quick, is you open your mouth, roll your tongue back in your mouth like that and stick it back there like that and clench the tight from the shoulders to the neck to the back of the head. You keep that stiff and straight. The back moves easy. Okay, that's what your weapon is. The tongue is rolled back to the back of your mouth, kept rolled like that, locked there, lock your neck in place. Now, when you hit here, if, if you hit using, and this is pretty large area, the forefront here, above the eyebrow line and below where the scalp line starts, so you're not glancing off, hit strike straight with here. You very, very uh, likely, the you won't even know or you'll be very surprised that you have struck a target so hard because you can't hardly feel the concussion. There's uh, no danger of blacking out uh, and you you can't properly gauge the strength of the force. You will be surprised at the strength of the force because you won't feel an equal force within yourself. The head using the head as a weapon is like that. Don't be uh, surprised or alarmed. That's the way it is. And the danger, as I say again, the danger is in injuring your neck. Okay, and using this part curling your tongue in the back of your mouth and stiffening the muscles from here down to here takes care of that problem. It allows you to utilize uh, a very effective close quarters weapon. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.